Good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor to be here today, and today I will talk about why do we need to defend democracy. I think the best way to answer this question is by answering another question: What had happened when democracy was lost? There's no better place to look for answers than to look at what had happened in my country, Thailand, in the last 90 years. Since 1932, Thailand Democratic Revolution, the country still struggles to establish a democratic governing system. At the heart of the conflict is this question, to whom the power belong, the military, the monarchy, or the people. Few numbers confirm this fact. In the last 90 years, Thailand has already 20 constitutions, 29 prime ministers, and 13 coup d'etats, more than any other countries in the world. On average, we have a new constitution every 4.5 years. On average, we have a new prime minister once every three years. And on average, there's one coup d'etat in every seven years. I am 44 years old this year. And in my life, I have gone through three coup d'etats already. When people stand up, against the dictatorship and demanding ballots, they receive bullets. 77 people were killed in the 73 uprising. 200 people were brutally massacred in October 76. 100 people been shot dead in May 1992, 99 people been shot dead in daylight in the middle of Bangkok in May 2010 for demanding a fresh elections. You see all of this, there's no generals has been held accountable for these crimes to date. The establishment just refuses to give the power to the people. This is General Prayut Chan Ocha, the leader of the latest school in Thailand in 2014. And he has been at the helm of the power for already eight years. He is the result of our failure to defend democracy. I was an executive running a private company before I entered politics. I felt hopeless about the future of my country. And I believe the people of Thailand deserve better. So I set up a political party in 2018 to challenge the junta rule. We campaigned for democracy human rights and reform of the mili military. Our campaign was so successful and it resonated with so many Thai people, particularly the people of the younger generation. We received 6.3 million popular votes in just our first election, six months since the inception of the party. And we became the third largest political party in the parliament after the 2019 election. I was selected by pro-democracy parties to be a prime ministerial candidate challenging General Bayut head to head. But our chance to form a government was denied by the election commission and by the senators, all of whom were appointed by the junta themselves. I did 
didn't even have a chance to enter the parliament. The election commission disqualified me from being an MP. And 10 months after the election, our party was dissolved by the ruling of the Constitutional Court, whose members are also appointed by the junta. I was charged with many criminal cases, including Computer Crime Act, sedition charge, violation of emergency decree, and less majesty. And my freedom may be limited. I don't even know when they will prosecute me. And it's just not only me. They also go after my family and my loved ones. For example, my niece, 17 years old, she also charged with Les Majeste for insulting the king. The result of our failure to defend democracy goes beyond the border of Thailand. Prayut Chan Ocha government brings Thailand very much closer to China, diplomatically, economically, and militarily. In 2015, 100 Uyghurs were sent back to China by the Thai government, despite the plea, despite the warning from international bodies that these Uyghurs may face harsh treatment if they were sent back. This, despite international pleas that they be allowed to be settled elsewhere. Without General Prayut, these 100 Uyghurs might have been living in a free world today. And this is what happened when you lost democracy. This is Myanmar. Since February 2021, 1,700 anti-coup protesters have been killed. 10,000 arrested and people flee from Myanmar to Thailand. General Prayut government denies access to these refugees. They cannot enter Thailand and they cannot go back to their home. They seek peace, they seek safety, they seek temporary shelters. And under international laws, they deserve it. There are elderly, mothers with infants, people with disabilities, those wounded from the raids and airstrikes. They are living in makeshift shelters with not enough food, without clean water, not enough medical supplies. International aids cannot be delivered to them because Prayut Chan Ocha government refuses international aids to flow from the Thai side effectively. This is what happened when you lost democracy. And if you want to know why, Nikkei Asia, a respectable news organization, has an answer. There is an alliance between Prayut Chan Ocha, the coup leader, Thailand, and Ming Ong Lai, the coup leader of Myanmar. Min Ong Lai gave an interview to Nikki saying this, quote, I will only stage coup d'etat if General Prayut is prime minister in Thailand. This is what happened when you lost democracy. Thailand 2010, after my party was dissolved, many Thai people started mass protest across the country against the system. They felt that their future was stolen. They demand many key reforms and including the reform of the monarchy. This is for the first time in the history of modern Thai politics that the demand to reform the monarchy is made 
public. General Bayut, who lacks a democratic legitimacy, always claim that he is the only one who can protect the monarchy. He is the only one who can stabilize the country. And under that context, General Bayut government issues many criminal charges to political dissidents, to protesters, to student leaders, 2,017 people to death. And then many of these are the last majesty law, 183 people, I myself included. This is just to silence the call for change and specifically, specifically, the call to reform the monarchy. Many of them are youth. Many of them have left the country. Many of them are in exile and many are in jail as we speak. This is the result of our failure to defend democracy. These, these cases should be enough to answer the question why we need to defend dem democracy. If we had successfully defended our democracy, if we had successfully stopped it, the coup d'etat of 2014, those 100 Uyghurs might have been living in a free world today. There might be no coup d'etat in Myanmar, and hence, 1,700 lives of anti-coup protesters might have been saved. And no one would be in jail in Thailand for criticizing the monarchy or demanding a better world. If there is one thing we can learn from this, don't take democracy for granted. It is very difficult to restore it. It takes a lot of time and effort, it takes a lot of blood and tears to restore it. Next year, there will be a general, general election in Thailand, and I believe that this is a real chance to make a real difference. It will be the first step to install a peaceful transition back to democracy for us. This is not just about another election, it's not about changing a government from this party to this, that party. But it is about ending the junta rules. It is about making people believe again that this country belongs to us all. So please stand with us in our journey as we will stand with you in yours for hope, for equality, for freedom, and for international solidarity. Thank you.